बोला था मैंने तीन दिया था Hey folks, see here Rachna Ranade here and I welcome you all to a very very interesting video. You know like in the pre bumper my husband was giving a hint to his friend for not drinking the very amazing tea that I had made. So today what we are going to discuss is about an economic parameter which hints towards something. But what is the parameter and what does it hint towards? is what we are going to discuss in the entire video. So before we move on to the main concepts I would want to thank M Sandeep Vlogs and narsimha murthy 2534 for their wonderful comments i'm sure everyone will agree with me that there are a lot of people wherein they say that the talk of the town is whether recession is already here few people say that we might enter into recession in coming few months but it would have been great if someone could hint us or if there could be some economic parameter that could directly hint towards whether recession is coming or not right so for that we have to understand multiple terms something like what is recession what is yield curve inversion what is yield curve what is yield don't worry we'll understand all these concepts one by one very nicely what was the first one what is recession and for that we have already made a video on this please watch the video whenever time permits but if you also don't know about what is yield then you can also watch this video but i'll not keep on pointing to all my previous videos at least for yield which is a very small concept i'll quickly give you an example assume that i buy the bonds of a financial institution whose face value is 100 rupees and assume i buy it at 100 rupees only assume that the interest rate which is promised on the bond is 10% so obviously what is my yield yield is nothing but approximately 10% in this case so i hope what is yield is very much clear now the next concept is very very important as to what is a yield curve how does it look like what is the slope of that curve and to answer all these questions let's take a very simple example so assume that you have gone to a bank and these types of charts are definitely put up in any bank right so uh, one more thing this is not a paid promotion of sbi this is just an example in fact i have taken the dates of 2012 so nowhere it's close, close to a paid promotion right okay so now if you observe the duration and the annualized yield for this fd just have a look uh, at the uh, specific column of below 15 lakhs where we are not talking about senior citizens okay now if you see here up to 90 days you can see the rate of interest or the annualized yield is 6.5% i'm just giving you examples not reading through and through if you see for up to 1 year you can see 6.66% yield now if you see up to 2 years the annualized yield is around 9.16% up to 8 years it is almost 12% and up to 10 years it is almost 13.19% now what is the one conclusion that you can draw from this <clears throat> lower the time frame lower is the annualized yield higher the time frame higher will be the annualized yield now the same chart if i were to plot on a graph how would it look like exactly now this is how it would look like why because at lower time frames on the x axis lower will be the rate of interest on the y axis and as and how the time frame increases the rate of interest or the yield is also going to increase but now understand generally whenever i refer to the term yield we generally don't use fds we generally use bonds to understand the concept better right so for that i have taken example of indian government bond and for that have a look at this i have plotted almost five different uh, maturities of indian government bonds you can see a three month bond one year two years five years and 10 years and if you again carefully observe for a three month bond how much is the yield it's 6.5% it keeps on increasing to a 10 year bond which is 7.26% now same thing if i were to plot on a chart again how would it look like exactly again it is an upward sloping chart so what have you understood by now whenever i'm talking about a yield it will follow the concept of high risk high possible return now where does the high risk come from please tell me for a 3 month bond ideally the risk is less <clears throat> because i know that in 3 months within 3 months things might not change upside down but if i'm talking about a 10 year tenure then there's a long way to go there are a lot of uncertainties and that is why the risk is high and that is why obviously the returns are on a higher side i hope you have understood that yield curve will generally be upward sloping but then what's a inverted yield curve that's what we are going to understand in the immediate next section of the video well i hope now can easily visualize 
that this is how a normal yield curve will look like. But then how will an inverted yield curve look like? Exactly, that's how it will look like. Now if you try and visualize this very carefully, you can understand that the yield is high for a low maturity period. And as and how the maturity goes on increasing, the yield goes on lower and lower. Now why could this be? Why for a shorter time frame the yields could be very high? That shows that the people, that the institutions are not having faith even in the short term. Maybe they feel that short term we are really scared and maybe in the longer run after 5 years, after 10 years, maybe things will get sorted out and that is where the low risk will come into place and that is why low yields will come in place. I hope you have understood this concept very nicely of what is an inverted yield curve. Now in fact this inverted yield curve can be checked as a very important economic parameter to understand whether a recession is likely to come or not. In fact it has been seen that for all recessions since 1960 an inverted yield curve was seen almost one year before the recession actually hit the market. But right now you'll be like, for India it is a normal yield curve, why are we even discussing this? Now for that, let's check how the yield curve looks like for USA. For that, let me tell you some facts. For US bonds, you can see the three months yields is something like this for one year, two year, five year, 10 year. You can see very nicely. Now let's try and plot this on a graph. Have a look at this. Oh, 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 oh. Now you can see this is downward sloping. India's was upward sloping. So India's was a normal yield curve, but for US, it's a downward or an inverted yield curve. So can I say this could be a sign of coming recession? Answer is yes. I'll give you one more example. This is the data point for UK bonds. And for UK bonds, I'm not going to show you the graph because now I should give you a homework. You have to visualize how this graph will look like. And I want you all to tell me that for UK, is it a normal yield curve or is it an inverted yield curve? I'm also going to give my answer in the comment section below. Well, till now we talked about bonds with different maturities, right? But how do analysts use these bonds? They typically take pairs of bonds. How? Let's take a simple example. Right now we had discussed about a US 10-year bond which is trading at around 3.41%. Whereas a 1-year bond is right now trading at 4.66%, right? Now for this you will understand that if I subtract the 1-year yield from the 10-year yield, this is coming negative almost 1.26%, right? Now we have to understand this very carefully. The more negative this number is, the chances of recession hitting the market is comparatively higher. Okay, this is one important rule that we are going to learn right now. And one more rule that we just did learn right now was that once we get an inverted yield, typically within a year or around one year, the recession actually hits the market, right? Now, let us try and understand that is this the only pair, one year, 10 year pair that can be taken? No, there are certain analysts who will take a two year and 10 year pair. But finally, what is the inference? If this number is in minus, then it means that chances of recession are high. And this minus is basically uh, an interpretation that the yield curve is inverted. Had this been the opposite way, now how is this opposite? Now the one year bond is giving a lower return and 10 year bond is giving a higher return, then this would not have leaded to, uh, this, would not, this would not have led to an inversion, this would have been a normal, normal yield curve, right? But has the yield curve really become inverted or not? For that, let us have a look at this chart. Now, this is a data which dates back right from 1965 to 2022, latest data. You can see that from 1965, just before 70, you can see that the yield curve had become inverted and followed by a gray patch, which is of recession. Immediately, you can see within next three, four years, again, we saw an inversion followed by a recession again same thing happened in 18 around 85 around 90s around 2000 just around 2007 8 and then you can see what has happened right now you can see again the yield curve is at minus 1.26 percent and this is most inverted since 1981 like we don't like the inverted yield curve, we do like this yield curve. So don't forget to smash the like button. Well, let's go back to our chart. This one, the 10 year minus one year yield chart. And I told you right now, the moment it's inverted, it was followed by recessions. And this has been proven multiple times. Similarly, if you look at this chart, you can see that this is a data between 10 year minus three months spread. And again, you can see, achha, in this one, only thing is that the minus figures are on the top, whereas the positive figures 
figures are at the bottom of the chart. Again, you can see the moment these yield curves are inverted, majority of the times be it 1970, 75, after 80 or 90s or 2000, 2010, 2020 also, every single time you can see that an inverted yield curve has led to a recession. Now wait. Two, three important points you have to understand. Whenever times are really worse, you check any time frame, it will show an inverted yield curve and then the likelihood of recession is high. And one more very, very important point that we have to understand that every recession has been, uh, you know, uh, before the recession that we have seen an inverted yield curve, but every time we see an inverted yield curve, it's not necessary that a recession will follow. I hope all these important points you have understood very nicely. Well, I hope in this entire video, you got answers to what is yield, what is a yield curve, what is an inverted yield curve. We talked about the position of India. We talked the, about the position of USA. We also understood how analysts use bond pairs, something like one year bond compared with 10 year bond. We also understood the fact that every recession has been preceded with an inverted yield curve and a lot more things in today's video. But don't forget to share this video with your friends. If you have loved it, don't forget to smash the like button as well. And if you want to know more about a budget special stock, you can click here. And if you want to know more whether Adanis are behind the market fall, you can click here. Till then, take care. Chahin and bye-bye.